Hi Robin, nice what to meet could you, you tell me about Palmer? Well, Palmer's been around for 40 years and as you indicated, kind of as a problem solver, that's the kind of products we have. We have DI boxes, line isolators, switchers and splitters and all those kind of products. They kind of solve problems people have in the audio world. And since we've been doing it for 40 years, we know pretty well where the problems are mm -hmm. and we like to tackle these. And um, I'd like to demonstrate this on one of these products that we have, the Palmer Pedal Bay. It's a pedal board for um, guitar players. And um, you know pedal boards, some of them are welded aluminum constructions. Ours is a screwed aluminum construction. And the aluminum bars are actually hollow. And so we thought, well, you always have some issues, um, including the power supply inside uh, a pedal board. And we thought, well, if we have hollowness, why don't we fill it with a power supply? And that's actually what we've done. We've taken the crossbar and we've integrated a power supply into the crossbar of the pedal board. In essence, it's actually our PWT-08 inside of this unit here. Oh, I see. Now, the cool thing is, because this is more or less modular, you can put one on each if you wanted to. So this is what it looks like when it, when it ships. It ships in this nice little box there with all the bits and pieces you need. You just release the screws, put that in here, 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 wherever you want. And it also comes with this little bar that kind of protects the cables once you've fitted them, make sure that they don't come out. So let's look at some details. You can see there's a couple of power outputs. Uh, most of them are actually 9 volt at 300 milliamps, but you can also see there's two sockets with switches next to them, and with them you can switch it between 9, 12 and 18 volts DC power. You'll also notice the orange socket here, that's the input, and next to it you have an output. Now that's super useful if you want to take a couple of these and you want to cascade them, you can take the output and go into the input of the next one. So they're also cascadable. Is it compatible to others? Well, it's actually quite, a, quite an interesting question actually, because um, this design of this pedal board is a Palmer original. Mm -hmm. And uh, people have imitated our design. And uh, wh while we were developing this, we were thinking, are we going to make it compatible to the others or not? And finally we said, ah, let's not mess around. Let's just make it compatible for everybody who has a pedal board of this build. So yes, the answer is yes, it is compatible to uh, pedal boards of a similar build. And speaking of which, this is a pedal bay 40. So 40 stands for the width in centimeters, so it's roughly 40 centimeters. We have a pedal bay 60, 80, and so on. And we're obviously, we're working on versions uh, for the 60 and the other uh, sizes as well. And they should be available by around the middle of the year. Very nice. Yeah. Great, thank you very much about that. What else do you have for me? Well, a quite a different product. So this is a kind of guitar-related product. Yeah. And now this is a pro audio-related product. This is called the Palmer Grand Audition Mark II. Mark II indicates that it's our second shot at this. And uh, the first version um, also worked really well, but we thought we could do a couple of things even better. And so what this basically is, is it's a speaker switching system for showrooms, for um, display rooms in stores, uh, even for labs. And you can switch speaker systems. So you have one input, and multiple outputs. And you can switch and regulate these outputs. Wow. And so for example, the inputs are in the back and you have a throughout as well. So you can connect your mixer or CD player to there. And then you just select the channels and whichever one you've selected, it actually has the output and you can adjust the level. Okay, very um, nice. Yeah, so that's, that's pretty cool. You have your, your uh, outputs here, which you can switch between mono and stereo and you have subwoofer outputs. So that's part of the game, but obviously that's not, that's I've, not I've prepared something <laughs> for you. Um, it's obviously, you can control it all via an iPad. Excellent. But you don't actually need an iPad. All you need is a device with network capability and a browser. So the whole operation of the system is browser-based. Mm -hmm. um, you don't need to download or update any apps. The software comes in from the device and you're always up to date. So that's pretty cool. Let me just um, show you how this works. So you can see, I can select the channels here and you can see that the channels switch correspondingly. There's no switching noises, there's no gap in between. It's a completely noise-free switching. Speaking of noise-free, this whole circuitry is actually an analog circuit. So the, the whole audio signal path is a high quality analog signal. 
Because if you think of the application, you, you've gone somewhere to compare different speaker systems. You want to listen to each one to a specific track and you want to de decide which one is the best. The last thing you want is to have a switching device or a mixer or something that's kind of messing with your sound and leaves you kind of unsure, was the switching system bad or was the speaker bad? So you really need something um, that is reliable and trustworthy and in a high quality. And that's what made us decide to stick to a high quality analog signal path for the audio. I see. The control is of course all digital, but the signal path is analog. Mm -hmm. Very smart. There's so many settings you can do here. I'm not going to be able to show them all, but you can switch between multi and single. So you can also select multiple channels. Um, you can switch between mono and stereo mode. So in stereo mode, all the channels are paired together. And you can adjust the volumes. You can label each channel so that it appears accordingly as a speaker system that you, you're demonstrating. And as I mentioned before, yes, you can connect a CD player or a mixing disc, but what's really cool is you can also connect a USB stick with your media to the oh. back. Mm -hmm. And then you have this rider here with player. And these are all the tracks that are actually on the USB stick and they're nicely uh, set up. So you can just select a track and you can uh, have, you have all the typical player options down at the bottom. And you, you, for comparing speaker systems, you just need a handful of decent tracks with which you can do the comparison. Um, what else is there to show? Devices, yes, obviously you can cascade these. So if the amount of channels you have here isn't enough, you can take two or three devices and cascade them. And um, it should be enough for everybody. And you also have user settings, so you can block certain settings for certain users. You can say, well, I'm going to adjust the volumes once, and, but the normal user is not going to be able to adjust the volume. Mm -hmm. You can do all that sort of stuff with this uh, remote control. So I think that's a giant, it's a huge leap for Palmer, um, who is also known for its analog equipment, but this has been a real nice development for us. And it's, it also shows where the brand is going to move to true to your sound, analog circuitry with a up-to-date digital interface. And it looks pretty cool. It does as well. And wh while you mentioned that, this is actually our new housing design. Let me just demonstrate. So this is a, the, the orange lid we have here. It's pretty prominent, but when you put it into a rack, all you end up with is that nice little thin orange pinstripe, which is very characteristic for the Palmer design. Very elegant. Yeah. So that's it from the world of Palmer.